Over the last few seasons, the number one draft pick has pretty much been set in stone for 12 months, 10 months, maybe even longer than that. If we think of the Harley Reid hype before he was the number one draft pick, but even going back further than that, Aaron Cadman, although he wasn't getting a lot of love, as compared to some other number one draft picks before that, but you think of the hype that Jason Horn Francis, Jamar Eugle Hagen, Sam Walsh, Matt Rowe, these guys got during their draft years. We hit 2024 now at the time of recording near mid-April with no clue who could be the number one draft pick. Not only do we not know at this point, and of course we can have our opinions and that is of course what this video is going to be all about. I would argue that there are seven players who are in line for that number one spot. And there are plenty others as well who are rocketing up the ranks. This draft class could be the most fun I have covered on any platform. But right now, let's take you through some of the top candidates in a very midfield heavy draft. Let's go. Let's start with Josh Smiley, the 195 centimeter bull who commits to both ends of the ground. And I'll tell you what else he does do is he brings aggression. When you're a big body mid as he is, and for anyone that's watched my draft content before knows how much I love those big body midfielders, Mateus Filippo, anyone in his draft season, I'm sure you will remember. But this guy is able to use his size properly. If we can use an NBA example, and by no means am I saying Josh is going to be this guy. But everyone that played with Shaquille O'Neal often spoke about the fact that he was a big guy who was not only not afraid to be big, but was big in every aspect. Played like a big man, threw his weight around, all these kinds of things. This is what Josh can do. From those that I've spoken with, his highlight tapes, all of these things. He is a guy that loves playing big. And as a big body mid, that is what you want. And if you are going to thrive in the AFL as a big body mid, it is what you need to do. And that's what he can do. And as that bigger body mid, he is able to get to both ends of the ground, which is fantastic. And what we love to see midfielders that can cover the ground. And especially at his size, loves hitting the scoreboard as well, and has started the season in excellent form. He's also going to be one of these guys who I think he's going to get more and more love throughout the year, because he's going to be very highlightable. What that means is, is that there are going to be clips of him on Twitter and TikTok and even YouTube shorts and all those kinds of things, showing off just how good he is. He might be one of the players taken very early. I think he definitely will be tied to the Hawks as well, although the Hawks can't match a bit unless he gets to 40, and he might not even get past four at this point. He is going to be a guy that attracts a lot of attention because everything he does on the footy field is either silky smooth, bulky, and brilliant, and he's just going to be all over social media. So get on the bandwagon now. He was one of my players featured in my five draftees to watch video, which you haven't checked out. You can do that as well, because I don't believe anyone else on the list was in that video. So you can go from here to that video. You'll have 11 draftees you already know about, and I'll cover a few more at the end of this video as well. So you can get a little bit of a head start on this year's draft crop. And we go to Levi Ashcroft next up. Now, a little bit boring in the sense of where he's going to go, because as we know, he's probably going to end up at Brisbane with his older brother, Will. And for anyone that's ever watched a set of brothers in sport, usually the younger brother is a bit more flamboyant. You think of Mark Wall versus Steve Wall. Yes, Steve was the better player, don't get me wrong, but the almost laconic, relaxed, outrageous style that Mark Wall brought to the footy uh, the cricket, I should say, my goodness, extraordinary. You could even go with the Mitch Marsh v. Sean Marsh example, the tough, nuggety nature of Sean, Mitch, you're bigger, you're flamboyant, all those kinds of things, and what a last two years or year and a half that Mitch Marsh has had. And that still exists in the footy as well, don't get me wrong, but Levi and Will, what a pair they're going to be to help this Brisbane midfield, who at the moment are looking blech and absolutely gross, but he started the year extraordinarily well there, has Levi, he's dynamic, he pounces on the loose ball, he's so effective at and post stoppage as well, which is really important, you don't want to be a guy who's effective at stoppage and then can't bring a whole lot else to the game, we think of how Hawthorne fans maligned Tom Mitchell, even during his Brownlow year, how Matt Crouch is currently maligned in the AFL, even Darcy Parrish is copping a little bit of it as well, being good 
in the stoppage, but what effect you can bring post-stoppage. Levi and Will are going to be awesome. Brisbane may end up losing Jared Berry and Hugh McCluggage at the end of the season. So you bring Will back in this year, bring Levi in next year. What happens with Devin Robertson and his development? Brisbane's midfield may go through a further evolution, which would be really exciting. But don't take the fact that he's a father-son off the table. This kid's a jet. Let's go to South Australia and talk about Sid Draper. Now, this kid, I think, is injured at the moment because for the life of me, Sample League, Sample Reserve, Sample Under-18s, I can't find any stats on him for the 2024 season so far. So, fingers crossed he's not injured too badly. But my God, this kid is one thing. Well, he's many things. But the thing that stands out the most, the number one factor to his game that is going to take him to the next level Agile. Holy smokes, this kid is so difficult to lay a glove on. One state MVP at the Under-18 National Championships last year. And by those who I trust around this space, could be the best of the lot five years from now. Now, the good thing about that is, sure, you might not be the number one draft pick. Although, he might. He, that's why he's in this video. I'm not discounting him from that number one spot. But... If you're going to be the best player in the next five years, not going to the worst club in the land might be the best thing for you. Think of how many drafts the number one pick has been the unanimous best player. Doesn't happen all that often. And even when you think of someone like Luke Hodge, yes, Hodgie, absolute star, absolute champion. Hawthorne would not change a thing. Absolutely. Is he better than Chris Judd and Gary Ablett Jr. as an individual player? No. Better leader? Yes. Better career? Absolutely. But you also got to remember, Hawthorne didn't have the traditional number one pick. They didn't finish last in 2001. But they traded Crow to McFarlane and got the uh, three picks in that ended up being Hodge, Mitchell, uh, and Daniel... Someone. Shit, I've forgotten his name. I'm so sorry. Uh, to Daniel there, I'll put his name down below. Uh, so my apologies there. So th you can kind of look at that as an anomaly. Yes, you got guys like Nick Rewalt, Brendan Goddard, who have been very good number one picks. Walsh, Rao, look like hits. I hope Walsh is okay. Horn Francis on the weekend, this is being recorded, is when he put on the clinic against the Bombers. So yes, there are going to be exceptions to this rule. Don't get me wrong, but with a guy like Sid or maybe a club that is looking at him, might be able to put him in a better position than potentially a West Coast could if they were going to get the number one pick. Could you imagine a Josh Smiley, that bigger bodied mid around Harley Reid, Elijah Hewitt and Ruben Jimby? <whistles> Crazy, but this kid, I can't wait to see more of him the more that the year progresses. Because he is, if he is going to be that agile player that's difficult to tackle, maybe a club like West Coast or maybe even North, although if they draft another mid, I'll go crazy. A guy who's so hard to tackle is going to be awesome. And considering you've got either from North, Luke Davies, Uniac, these kind of guys, and then you've got at West Coast, Reed and Jindy, who are going to be so hard to tackle, maybe you don't need that bigger bodied mid. But hopefully we can get some more data on Sid soon, and we can get a fully clear picture of where he's at in 2024. But my God, the last year highlight reel, oh, extraordinary. Staying in South Australia, let's go to Ben Camperiali, the son of Scott, a prolific ball winner who can do everything but kick it goal straight. The poor bugger in circa Nick Watson style is kicked six behinds in the Sandful under-18s comp at the moment. So fingers crossed he'll be able to hit the scoreboard in a positive way moving forward. Everything else this year he's done has been fantastic, as you can see from the numbers there. But a prolific midfielder, his work rate is fantastic. And what else he is that is quite clever and could set you apart when you get later on in the year is he's such a precise kick his weighted kicks are fantastic now when you go and look at a player's highlight reel they don't really show you the scrubs along the ground ben's one of those players that you are not going to be able to find a lot of them anyway no matter how much you deep dive now could you find a few you could find a few on any player for crying out loud but the overall majority is is that this kid can use his right boot beautifully he was best on ground in the curtain raiser to the grand final. And I know, I know player comparisons can sometimes drive you a little bit nuts, but he's currently a South Australian and I want to go to a South Australian player. This kid, to me, Zach Butters 2.0. 
Also keep in mind the amount of impact per possession that players are able to have. He's had 43 disposals in the last two weeks, which may not seem like a whole lot, but what he's been able to do from there, round three at his seven marks, seven inside 50, seven clearances across those two weeks as well extraordinary ways he's been able to use the ball effectively. You think of seven clearances for 22 disposals. That's one in every three touches. He is getting the ball away from a stoppage. If he is able to translate that to the AFL scene and get that 22 number up to 30, then you're looking at another clearance. 30 touches, eight clearances. That is a potential Brownlow winner right there with someone of those kind of statistics. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he goes as well. And don't worry, I'll talk about his brother towards the end of the video. Not many in the under-18s comp here in Victoria can stack up numbers-wise to Jagger Smith, a guy who is captain of the Oakley Chargers and has led them to a pretty good start to the season. But his numbers are extraordinary. Just take a look at them there on the screen. And in and under mid, but my God, his ball movement can be elite and pure class. He is a standout on the field and a guy who's you can't take your eyes off him all that much. Average nearly 30 disposals in last year's comp. He is dominating at the moment in his draft year as well. And I think out of all of these guys, when doing the research and starting to get my feelers out there to these people that I know and trust, he was probably the guy that I'd watched the least of. Now, is that more on me than anyone else? Absolutely. I will not deny that for a moment. Is he the guy I'm watching the most now? He definitely is up there. My goodness gracious me. Everything he does is worth sitting down and watching. And that's extraordinary for someone in their under 18 year. He is definitely, definitely right now, either pick one or pick two if the draft was happening today, in my opinion. Absolutely, he is. Extraordinary talent. Cannot wait to see what the next few months holds for this young man because he will be going to an AFL club that will be extremely happy to get him. My goodness. Jagger Smith. Great name. Great player. Now, I said earlier that Ben Camporiali reminded me of Zach Butters 2.0. What if I told you that there was a Connor Rosie 2.0 out there? His name is Christian Moraes. Now, it could be Moraz. I have heard both, and whenever I talk to people in the know about this topic, they only put it in messages. So if you know how it's pronounced, go down there. I'm going to call him Christian throughout because as someone who was called Reese in primary school in, you know, mid-2000s, the amount of times I got called Rice was really doing my head in. So I can understand people getting frustrated at their name being pronounced wrong. So from here, I'm going to go with Christian until I'm 110% sure on the pronunciation of his last name. But this guy has one mode and one mode only, and that is go get the footy a shitload of times and go aggressive, hits the goals, whether it is off his boot or off the clearance. This guy wants to take territory. He could lead the comp one year in meters gained per disposal. All he wants is to get and go. And if you don't believe me, which would be an extremely weird stance for you to take, look at those numbers for crying out loud. What more could you want? He is going to be taken very high in this draft, and you'll never believe it. He comes from a basketball background, so I know people are going to look at that and go Pendlebury 2.0, but the Connor Rosie draft comparison, I think, just works beautifully, and considering how well Connor played against Essendon too, my goodness me, that is a very nice comparison for Christian there, but... What he wants to do is just get his team into attacking positions, which is awesome. Has he needed to be defensively minded? Not really. Not many 18-year-old midfielders do, to be fair. But 50 disposals and 7 goals in his last two weeks? Yes, please. My goodness me. There is a case to be made that right here, right now, he is the number one pick. I don't see a reason why he wouldn't be right now. Extraordinary way that he has started the season. But what I love about this video and what I love about this draft class so far is that if he keeps up this form, he probably is. And who this really benefits are the two father sons being Levi and Ben. Because if even if they are the number one pick types, clubs may not bid on them because there's already a ready-made mid that they could go after. So the real winners here could be Carlton 
and Brisbane. And considering Carlton are probably going to be a very good side, Brisbane were top four last year, got their first win over North recently. Do we really need to give them a leg up? I think most people know my stance, which is bid on these kids as early as you can if you want them at your football club and make clubs pay a maximum. Sure, absolutely go down that path. But if you're telling me this guy is the consolation prize, sign me the up. Last but certainly not least is Finn O'Sullivan, who hasn't had the greatest start to the year numbers-wise, but the way this kid plays the game and what he was able to produce last year makes him an absolute standout when it comes to this draft class. His ability to change the course of a game and have a high impact per possession is profound. So whilst his numbers there aren't going to scream off the page, his ability to present when he comes higher up the ground is going to be a huge tick for recruiters, for football clubs, even for football coaches. And then you also get into the realm of the fact that for his size, he is able to mark overhead beautifully and create more opportunities. We are kind of in a flux at the moment. If there's one thing that midfielders are struggling to do in the competition is take your overhead marks. And it is something that can set you apart as a player. Liam Shields was an excellent overhead mark for his size. Now, we brought other things to the table, of course, as will Finn O'Sullivan, but being able to add that string to your bow as a smaller player is going to be awesome. Another guy who is elusive and hard to tackle just because he was last on this list does not mean that he is last in terms of his skill factor. I do not know which of these seven is the best right now. And that's what makes this video hopefully very enjoyable for you and so fun to dissect. But they are the seven guys now. Seven, it's not exactly the greatest number in the world. Let's go through a few names really quickly. Lucas Camporiali, Ben's twin brother, has started the year like a house on fire. Taj Hotton whose brother or cousin, uh, Ollie, who is at St. Kilda at the moment that we haven't seen a whole lot of yet, but he has started the year like a house on fire, has been extraordinary. Jaden Newen as well has been fantastic. I've probably butchered the last name, Jaden, so I apologize for that. Luke Trainer has started the year really well. Jack Whitlock, when you think of your key forwards, is someone that I'm keeping a very close eye on. So there are going to be plenty of names that we are going to keep an eye out for for the remainder of this uh, draft class. So because we have such a top uh, and tight top end of this draft, I will be doing my first mock draft, the April version, at the end of the month, which I cannot absolutely can wait for and i hope you can't either if you like the video like the video subscribe to join the dad's talks footy family click that bell like i told you at the start of the video to be notified of when every new video drops because every time you watch you help not only me but you help more people that haven't discovered the channel watch videos as well leave a comment as to which one of these guys you think is going to be the number one draft pick and we can see whether your predictions come true and you can help buy does a powerball ticket if you're going to get it right so appreciate that in a massive way appreciate you in an even bigger way i will be back on wednesday to get you a, another video and until next time stay safe you absolute legends